All right, welcome back to Car Stories with Sung Kang and Amelia Hartford. And today we are talking with. We are talking with a very special guest. His name is Hurt. I asked about his last name. He said, I go by just Hurt. <laughs> so just Hurt. Hurt he, Life on Instagram. The man, the myth, the legend. He's a good friend of ours. And we get to talk about his history, um, his love for drifting, yeah. his association with Hoonigan, and all things FC. Yeah. And recently being a host on the new Hot Wheels NBC show. Um, it's been so cool to see his career flourish. Um, and he's a hard worker who just someone who's really passionate about cars and, and the motorsports world and to see where he is today. I think it's a really cool and inspiring story that people are about to hear. Yeah. And he's just great representation for the community. So um, here we go. I'm so happy to see your career and everything. You're just killing it, it's, dude. I, I could say the exact same about you. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy how far we've come yeah. in this space, um, just basically doing what we love, you know? Yeah, we're just a couple kids who, who like tinkering and driving cars. Yeah, Drifting is a, is a very interesting thing because when I started doing this in 2007 or whatever, I mean, there was no Instagram. Yeah. Uh, we might have still been using MySpace. Like social media wasn't even at on least the scope. Facebook. At, at the yeah. very least, Facebook. Yeah. But social media wasn't even on the scope. You know, we were doing things uh, because we loved them. Sure, there are websites you could upload things, but we never, I, I never imagined uh, what this space would turn into mm. with. Um, the amount of reach you can gain from just doing what you love mm -hmm. and any any aspect not just drifting you could be a cook you could uh you could be a car detailer or whatever there's like the the ability to make a career because of the tools like social media is actually insane like, and also be able to share that like freedom of expression right too yeah everyone has a voice yeah it's good but so you said you started in 2007 yeah 2007 um i mean uh, Where'd you start? In Florida? You're from Florida, yeah, yes? So yeah, so born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Um, I, when I say to, I, I mean, I started immediately once I got my first car when I was 16. It mm -hmm. was a 2004 Honda Accord. Uh, shout out to my mom. She she <laughs> got it for me as a as a gift, still in high school. Um, and I immediately ruined that car. <laughs> like, Trying to drift the front wheel drive? Well, just, you know, I, I went to Home Depot, got some uh, dryer ducting, made an intake. You know, had no idea about how maths work or anything like that. So the idle air was all messed up and um, just, you know, fart can, all the good stuff. Love you know? it. Yeah. But it had, fart can? What's a fart can? It's like a, a crappy exhaust. Yeah. Oh, a fart can. You call it fart yeah, can. Okay. Yeah. Or like a, fart cannon. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's shaped like a. Yeah. Well, it's a four cylinder automatic. Honda Accord with an exhaust, so it just sounds like it's farting, <laughs> you know, uh, everywhere you go. But you can't drift that car because no, 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 okay. So no. you weren't drifting the Honda. No, Accord. I didn't even. Okay. Drifting wasn't even on the scope. Drifting okay. is an interesting thing because, like, obviously, I had seen Initial D. Obviously, I'd played like Need for Speed Underground too, and I loved drifting in those games. But it never occurred to me that that was something you can do in real life, you know. So, mm -hmm. so it, it's funny how it all came together because. Because I, I I loved playing those games, but it wasn't like, a, oh, I'm going to do this in real life. That wasn't in my in mm -hmm. my thought process. I just loved playing the game, you know? What was your first experience seeing drifting then? Because that had to have been kind of like a very memorable moment. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I can tell you my, my, my true experience, right? So I had that Civic hatchback. I got rear-ended. I got the insur insurance check. And the day that I got the insurance check... Um, my friend was taking me home from work and there's a used car dealership that was also an, a rotary shop. Oh. And they had a white FCRX7 parked out front for sale. Oh, that's hot. And so I was like, I'm, that's the car. Yeah. You know? So I had the insurance check, cashed it, went and bought that you car. You knew what that was at the time, right? Uh, we saw it I, initial I did. D. What's it's, that? It's an in initial D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's another interesting thing, right? Mm. Is Is I watched you know, initial D, I played games, but again, I just didn't really correlate real life with these, you know, these shows and these things, right? I mean, when I watched Fast and the Furious 1, 
there was an FDR X7, but I didn't put it together that that was an FDR X7. Like, like it was, it's a real thing. Right, you know. Or it, even it, tangible. It, it was just such a, like, it was so separated, so 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 detached, right, um, for me. Uh, and it, it started to become more real. I get this RX-7, and I go to an RX-7 meet. It's like a dino day. Mm-hmm. And in Florida? In Florida, yeah, okay. yeah. So this is all Orlando, Florida. I go to a dino day. I, I meet a new friend, Chris. He has an RX-7, and he's like, we, we, you know, I don't know, we car stuff. You go to car meets, you talk yeah. to people, you make friends. Um, it's the beautiful thing about this culture that we're we're in, and he invites me to uh, their secret spot. Ooh. You know, yeah, it's it's. But everyone had a secret spot. Yeah, you know? like I... <laughs> yeah. He invites me to a secret spot where him and his friends go uh, to drift, and it was it was a construction site for like a Pepsi building or something like that. Um, and it was a really sandy lot on top of concrete, I'm like so it was really easy to slide. Mm-hmm. You know, good on tires. You can go all day secluded. And so they take me to this spot. They set a cone up, and they're like, "You need to be able to do donuts around this if you want to drive with us, mm-hmm. right?" <laughs> if you want to drive with us, you got to learn how to <laughs> do the basics. No, I love it. That's like and the first thing you got to learn. It's actually, and I don't. This is how I remember it. There, there could be you know very variances and things like that, but this is how I remember this story, and it just like. It gives me chills every time I think about it because, like, this is a very defining moment in in my life, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I do the donuts and then time goes on and these guys just take me under their wing and teach me everything, right? They taught me how to clutch kick um, on Rocket Boulevard, which was another spot that we used to go to, which was just a perfect sweeper and Mm -hmm. you could just run it back and forth, you know? Can Uh, you uh, describe what a clutch kick is for the for the listeners yeah so so they taught me how to clutch kick and a clutch kick is where is a, is a way to initiate drifting so obviously you can go in fast and pull the handbrake and that'll start to slide if you want to be a little more aggressive um as you're you're running towards the the apex you uh you push the clutch in rev it up and then pop the clutch mm. And so it's just like a a quick clutch kick and that'll get the car sideways Mm. and initiate your drift. So they taught me how to do that. They taught me how to do a lot of things and, and they, they, they made drifting real for me. Mm -hmm. You know, they helped me understand like, oh, it's not just in video games. This is actually real life. And, and then, um, we, that got me in closer with uh, Njuku Racing as well. What what? Njuku so, Racing. So it's a motorsport shop in Florida. Mm. They they've built drift cars. They've competed in Formula D for a long time. Um, they're like an OG company. They're super OG, and um, that's when I got to see professional drifting. Mm-hmm. So going to like Nopi Nationals and seeing, you know, people like Kenji Yamanaka and. Justin Pollock, like completely different spectrums of of drift culture, but you know, all in the same place on the highest level at the time. And uh, damn, you're you were there really at like the peak of of drifting motorsports, really when it was coming together in the U.S. Right? I feel like I I feel like I was a couple years off, but I was there yeah. for sure. Like I I wasn't there for um, D1 versus USA, mm-hmm. which was like 0304. And and that stuff, but I, I feel like I definitely got to witness um, the the early days of yeah. American professional drifting, and that's why I like, you know, my cars are styled. Um, I guess you could say, I mean, you can you can clearly see that my cars have inspiration from Japanese mm-hmm. uh, style drifting, and they do. But I I still. Feel very much a product of American drifting. Mm-hmm. Um, from you know, obviously, I had a V8 in my RX-7. You know, the RX-7 that I t- talked about, learned how to drift in all that stuff. I ended up smashing that car into pieces. And mm-hmm. you know, time goes on. I I I did a lot in life. You know, like I lost my license for a little bit. I, I had to 
Really? Street. Oh yeah. Like you got busted. Just just doing times. stupid stuff. Yeah. I don't rec- recommend anyone losing their license. No, it's, go, to, it's go a, to the track and do it safely. It's a this horrible a situation. Time. Yeah. yeah. This, I mean, it, it wasn't even for street drifting. It was just like stupid speeding tickets here and there, mm-hmm. like speed traps and points. Yeah. There's a point system in Florida, and you get X amount of points. They just take your license. They had that right? in Indiana. I got pretty close. <laughs> yeah. So I lost my license for a couple months, and that was probably one of the hardest couple months that you know I ever had. And. Uh, and that's when I got in with Njuga Racing. Um, they weren't hiring. I was like, I'm going to come and sweep some floors. And mm-hmm. swept floors, worked my way into sales, ended up um, you know, being a big part of their sales force as they reinvent themselves um, after the recession back then. And, uh, and then I got my RX-7 from, from my friend Zach. So my friend Zach had this V8 RX-7. It was looked bone stock massive v8 with nitrous so you bought it with the v8 so i bought it with a blown up v8 okay yeah so he had that car forever and i always joked about buying it he blew it up bought a z06 parked it under a tree i had a crown vic i just smashed the diff in it doing burnouts (laughs) you know and uh, i posted it up for sale and he's like i want that car and i was like well i want your rx7 and uh the the crown vic was really nice it just had a did you guys do a trade out right we did. <laughs> I don't know what the prices were back then, but today that wouldn't make sense. <laughs> well, no one wanted RX sevens. There was a there's a time where RX sevens you could no no one really messed with the rotaries a lot. I mean, obviously people mess with the rotaries, but the common car guy didn't want to deal hmm. with the rotary engine. So RX sevens just weren't sought after vehicles. It's interesting because today, like. They're very, I feel like, sought after. Yeah, I mean, they're... Well, this it, was the FC, though. It wasn't the FT. Hey, the right? FC is way better than the FT. <laughs> no, but, I, I, I mean, say it out loud. The, the FC right. is still an affordable, like... Yeah, in, in comparison, the, 100%. Yeah, to the FT. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. You could buy a nice FC build uh, for a decent price, whereas FDs are, like, minimum 40 grand for a nice car. So that's why that RX-7 you bought, the FC was swapped with the V8 uh, to get more horsepower. Yeah, so he was a drag racer. He mm-hmm. was a big V8 guy. So he swapped that car and ended up blowing it up, parking it under a tree. We ended up doing the trade. Love and it. then I went to LKQ, um, just the junkyard, mm-hmm. bought a 5.3 liter um, LS, which is an iron block version of the 5.7 LS for, uh, LS1. I bought that for 500 bucks. And you know, took all the truck stuff off of it and put it in the car. And I, I never knew the Ellis, and that was a five three. Yeah, hmm. yeah. So the the first one, yeah, the Torque Stallion, my FCRX seven, known Which as the was, Torque Stallion. Yeah, I was gonna say that was the name. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that's just a silly name we came up with because cars just are better with names in my yeah. opinion. I don't know, it just makes it fun. What did you I name it? Torque Stallion. Torque Stallion. Torque. Torque Stallion. Torque. Yeah. Torque. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where'd that booty. Yeah. Where'd that name come from? Um, because I would do ridiculous burnouts and the back would just <laughs> just shake. Oh. So we just called it the Torque Stallion. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Sung is also really good at naming cars. Uh, I thought you were going to say he's really good at twerking. <laughs> but... <laughs> well, I have yet to see it. <laughs> that too. That too. Yeah, once the camera's <laughs> off, we'll, yeah. we'll get, a, you know, get a show. But um, yeah, the Torque Stallion is what it turned into um but yeah it's a fun project and the v8 was great and a lot of people hated it but so this is where i i you know i'm a product of american drifting right because i put a v8 in a japanese car but i also had uh bn sports big wing slammed on vskfs so very j style externally but it had a cammed out V8 on the inside. I still want to own those wheels, even though I know they're like, pl- people say they're played out, but God, I love no, those wheels so you, much. I want a set for my 240. Whoever says they're played out has no idea what they're doing. Right. <laughs> but what is, what is this, what, what do you mean by American drifting? Like, um, what, what well, is, just, what's, a, what's that? American mean? drifting is just very different from Japanese How? drifting. Um, the style, the types of motors they use, the just the, just the overall aspect, I mean, and. I mean, things are changing now, but back then it was very Japanese drifting. Style is paramount, right? So the cars, and obviously it's subjective. You know, um, someone might think this is cooler than that or whatever. But style is subjective. 
um, turbo motors, four cylinder, six cylinder, you know, SRs, two Js, one Js, all that. That's what Japanese drifting was. And mm -hmm. low cars, bright wheels, or big wheels. And then American drifting was, it was a mix to begin with, but it turned into V8, 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 V8. And styling. Function over form type Function thing. over form. Not that form doesn't function. That's another conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, it's subjective, but people really thought externally Japanese cars looked way better than um, the American drift cars. Mm. So there was just always a battle of, of Japan is better, uh, America is better. And, you know, so me coming from watching Nopi Nationals in the early days of Formula Drift, um, seeing Tanner Faust bomb the hill of uh, Road Atlanta in a Scion TC with a NASCAR V8, and that V8 is just punching you in the chest from hundreds of feet away. Like, that is American drifting, you know? And so I loved V8s. I love the idea of V8s. I love the sound of V8s. And so I was very happy to take a V8 and put it in my RX-7. And I didn't know that I was causing a stir when I did it, mm -hmm. you know, because it was just normal for me. But as I got deeper and learned more about the culture and the internet started to grow. Yeah, so that's before you can get really trolled on the yeah, internet or something. Right. And the internet started to grow. Uh, then I was like, oh, people don't like this. And then I just fed into it, <laughs> you know. I'm just like, well, this is, you know, this is my car. I'm gonna do yeah. what I want to do with my car, and I, I think everyone should kind of uh, live by that. So, so I just trolled the trolls, and uh, that was a good time. So, if I can ask, because I'm so curious about the progression of your career and and how you are where you are today. Obviously, the next thing to talk about would be your involvement with Hood again, right? Mm -hmm. So how did you go from, I guess, how did, I'm sure people are, are curious on how you got that opportunity, but you were a big personality with the Hoonigan brand. When I looked at Hoonigan, you know, I thought, I thought hurt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hear that a lot and mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Obviously, um, the late great Ken Block. Right. He, May he, he rest in peace. He, yeah. He, he's forever a legend and he did, he did a lot for Hoonigan yeah. as a brand. It's just. It just depends on when you started watching Hoonigan. Right, the day-to-day -day vlogs versus the Jim Gymkhana right. uh, series. Right, so uh, my opportunity at Hoonigan uh, came about when, um, so basically I was friends with, you know, Drift Alliance. So mm -hmm. Vaughn Gittin Jr., Ryan Turk, Tony Angelo, um, Chris Forsberg, that whole group of East Coast English town drifters. And I used to go up there a lot, uh, East Coast Bash, shout out Club Loose. And um, so the phase that I told you about when I lost my license, I picked up a camera and started filming drifting because I still wanted to be involved in the community, oh, even though I didn't have a car or anything anymore. I had to take a break from that to get, you know, get myself together. But so I picked up a camera and I started making videos. Um, so I'd film them on, you know, bash days. And like cinematic or mm, or would you vlog before no, vlogging? No, no. You just film them drifting. Yeah, I would just film them drifting, put some music to it and make it fun, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I wish I believed in vlogging a lot sooner because <laughs> I didn't believe in it uh, in the early days. And that's something I'm like, man, imagine. But, um, but because of, you know, the videos I used to make with my friends um, and, so that's, you know, making it splash and then Hoonigan is starting uh, to be conceived. Mm -hmm. And um, basically th the stars aligned to where, you know, I, I met Brian Scotto, the co-founder of Hoonigan Industries. He also um, was one of the brilliant minds behind, behind Zero to 60 magazine. He's basically just the, and, and has directed a, majority of the Jim Connor films. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, and was best friends with Ken. And yeah, uh, amazing friends with Ken Block. Yeah. Um, he's just a creative juggernaut. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a vision and he has a way of laying out those visions like not, uh, like I've never seen before. So um, Brian Scotto, I met him at Chris Forsberg's party after he won the championship. 
I don't remember meeting him that night. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. We, I don't know if we remember meeting each other that night, but there's a, a photo of us eating tacos. Uh, <laughs> really, like a really bad photo of us eating tacos at this party. And I think we became Facebook friends uh, because of that, right? I love that. And, um, and, you know, time goes on, the relationship grows. I'm doing my thing in my RX-7. I'm doing driveway burnouts at, at my house and just, you know, just having fun in my car. Mm -hmm. And Hoonigan is is starting to become a thing. Um, and so it, it basically came down to um, Brian hit me up on Facebook after X amount of time. And he's like, and this, I mean, this is after, so funny, funny story. I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay. Hoonigan, Hoonigan is, my name's Hertrich. Hoonigan is Hoonigan. Eight letters. Hoonigan's launch date was November 1st. That's my birthday. It's like just the weird. Synergy, yeah, yeah, just weird, you know, weird energy that just comes together. And um, we had a great time that year, the launch party, and I think I just, really built a good relationship um, with those guys on top of what I do on the media side, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I liked my videos to be different from everyone else at the time, because everything felt the same, so I wanted to bring some rawness to it. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Hoonigan was a pretty raw brand. Yeah. So they had a role that needed to be filled, and um, thankfully, I was just in the right place in the right time, doing the right stuff. and. After that SEMA party, Ken raised GRC, his car caught on fire, they got video of it all, and then he hit me up and he's like, hey, you wanna edit this video? And was I qualified to edit a video of that caliber? <laughs> no. Did I don't I know if a lot of people know <laughs> that you used to edit a lot of the videos. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that yeah. I was camera and edit for a, a and personality and cre it, helped with creative. I mean, there's people, I think there's people that work there now that don't even know that I <laughs> <laughs> that I did that, you know? And not uh, to take away from everyone else who's there on the team too. Yeah, but, no, not at all, not yeah. at all. But I mean, you know, I, I, I just had a, I just had a different vision and voice and, and rawness. And obviously Brian helped fine tune that yeah. as well. Um, it's all collaborative. Yeah, so he hit me up to edit that video I said, oh, no problem. And I'm in Florida, they're in California. Brian is a night owl. So it's 3 a.m. for me and I'm just like falling asleep <laughs> editing this video. Um, and you know, that goes out, that's cool. I got to edit a video for Ken Blog. What'd, like, you, what'd you edit on? Uh, it was a really old MacBook. It's like uh, Final Cut or something? Oh yeah, it was Final yeah. Cut, for sure Final yeah. Cut, yeah. Um, Might have been pirated, but don't tell me. But, uh, <laughs> and so that, you know, I. With that, I showed him my work ethic, what I can do when yeah. I'm, you know. Well, you're up at 3 a.m. editing. Just grinding it out. Yeah. That's that's Brian's dream, is editors that'll stay up till 3 a.m. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> getting stuff done. I feel like that's any content creator's <laughs> dream, <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and so you fast forward a little bit, Brian messages me on Facebook, and he's like, hey, you want to move to California? And I said, hey, you want to give me a job? And he was like, yeah. And the rest was history. And yeah, so... There, there was a long period of silence in between that, and I was like, oh, I guess I didn't actually get this job, and then, and then it, you know, they flew me out, interviewed, and then it became real. So I packed my car with everything that I could fit in it, and if it didn't fit in there, I didn't bring it. I always, it's you said the saying of like they took me under the wing, and I say the same thing about the car community. I packed my 240SX with everything, my V8 Japanese car with everything I could fit yeah. in it, drove to California and just to make it, just to yeah. just to yeah. do something, right? Yeah. I was very comfortable at, in Florida. I didn't have to leave, but I just felt like there was more, like a calling almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just felt like there was more, and it, it would just be a shame to not, you know go see if there was. What were you doing for work in Florida? So when I left to go to Hoonigan, I was working at Njuka Racing, mm. um, doing mostly wholesale, but also uh, direct to consumer sales. Mm. So, you know, nine to five, come in, answer phones, make sales, answer emails. Um, and that all stemmed from me going in, sweeping floors and like forcing my way into a job. You yeah. know? Cause I just wanted to be in the automotive industry. Um, I loved cars so much. I, I used to valet park cars before that at the Hard Rock Hotel, and that was good money, but 
it just didn't feel did, you know did cars run in the family at all not at all yeah i'm the only Same. Yeah. i'm the only automotive person in, in the family and that that makes me excited um you know now my son's here he's four he loves cars and i, I feel very excited to to get to kind of i'm not gonna force him to do anything he loves it himself i never once you know he chose hot wheels you know he mm -hmm. he chose that stuff and and he he takes it all in so i'm excited to kind of nurture that and, and see what it becomes i'm excited to see it yeah it's 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 really exciting it's really exciting but yeah, I'm the I'm the only automotive person in my family, so it's it's interesting that this is where I ended up, you know. Right. All things considered. Yeah, so. I'd agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess for people who are listening, who are like, oh, drifting, like I've always seen it, but I have no idea how to get into it. I don't even know where I could go to to just watch people do it grassroots. Do you have like? Just some quick advice for people who want to get into it and don't know how. I know times are different today with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like it's easier now than ever. Okay. Um, you can you can Google search. You can go on Instagram and search hashtag, hashtags. Um, like if it's something you want to do, it's. I feel like it's easier than ever. Um, if you want to actually drive... Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you have many options for cheap, low budget drift cars. The 350Z, uh, C5 Corvette, C5 Corvette, E46, mm -hmm. you know, four door or, or coupe. And there's also um, schools that yeah. you can go to to, to kind of just start doing a donut. Or... Yeah, there, there are schools all over the place. I know um, Georgia and Lanier, they have a little school that they do once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. uh, Texas Drift Academy with Josh Robinson. Yeah. Um, there, there's tons of options to get into drifting. It, it It's pretty easy to find these days. You might have to drive an hour or two away to see it, but it's worth it. And also people just want to watch. They can go to a Formula Drift event. Yep. They do them all over the U.S. Yep. Yeah, yeah Formula D is, is alive and well. And um, that that is a, that's definitely it'll blow your mind <laughs> yeah if you've never been to, or yeah. seen drifting to go to that you're like oh seeing, wow seeing cars move at those speeds bring your it's plugs it's crazy how far <laughs> it's crazy how far formula drifters come because yeah right i mean i remember going in the early days and seeing tandem then to now everything is a thousand horsepower and the tandem now yeah uh, it's crazy they've been going to Irwindale for you know 20 years or something like that and mm -hmm. every year it's faster and scarier to you know i and love more drifting. consistent too yeah i love drifting i love going fast those guys scare me so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's a different style of drifting though in a way though yeah it's finding every ounce of grip out of a 285 295 200 treadwear compound tire mm -hmm. uh, is pretty well and you just shot a show in the uk do you want to talk about that at all? So I just had the opportunity to shoot um, Hot Wheels Ultimate Challenge, mm -hmm. Rutledge, Rutledge Wood, uh, Top Gear US, The Floor is Lava was the host of the show and also a judge. I was a judge and then Delala was also a judge. Um, and that, Sung was also a guest of one yeah, of the, Sung, one of the episodes. Was a, yeah, he was. He was a guest. He was a wonderful guest. It was very mean to Rutledge. It was great, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. But um, it, it, I didn't know I, I never dreamt of being on TV. I am and was so happy yeah. to see that you were one of the hosts of that show. I appreciate it. I feel like you are so deserving of this opportunity. I was just, I, I saw you in the airport as we were passing ways and I like had to stop yeah. you to say, dude, I'm so happy for yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate that. It, it, it still doesn't feel real, honestly. And it's like, I never dreamt of being on TV. And then we started doing it. And I was like, wow, I didn't even know I dreamt of this, but now that I'm doing it, this is like a dream come true. Yeah. And then like the cherry on top is that my mom, you know, gets to see me on TV. Like yeah. that's just such a cool, that's just such a cool thing. Like, uh, not that I ever thought she thought I was a failure or anything like that, but I just feel like that that is an accomplishment as a, as a parent to mm -hmm. see your child do something yeah. on a grand stage like that. So it, it just it, it felt really cool to be a part of it, mm -hmm. um, being in a production like that and working with people like Rut, Sung, uh, Terry Crews, mm -hmm. uh, Jay Leno, and, and like 
we were just around legendary folks. And yeah. so it was cool to get to feed off of their energy and just learn by being around you guys. I learned how to kind of just purely be yourself when you're on a stage like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and, and this is what I just gathered from watching you guys do your thing. You didn't really change for for any situation, right? I, I feel like you stayed very true to yourself and 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 also making yourself vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. Because like, so when Terry was on, he, I, I watched him be so happy and, you know, speak to someone. And then uh, the story, you know, kind of got a little deep, you know, sharing, sharing stuff about her aunt and things like that. And like, you could feel the emotion just yeah. kind of come out of him and he made himself vulnerable and shared some some stuff um and this is on camera and off camera yeah. you know and it's just like wow is isn't it isn't that wild because you watch tv um as a viewer and you look at these people and you're like like almost like they're you think they're putting on something or you think that they're behaving differently when yeah. you know most of the time that's they're they're just unapologetically being their self yep. they're being open vulnerable yep. and and i feel like the people who are most successful are the people who are just themselves and that's what i feel like i gathered yeah for that exactly yeah. is 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 you don't have to try to be anything but yourself no. just have a good time and, yeah and if you know if it works it works and Plus. and same with kids who are listening like social media um, whatever you're trying to do, I feel like if you just be yourself at the end of the day, that's yeah. you are enough. Mm -hmm. You are enough. Yeah, don't get caught up looking at social media accounts. Social media is kind of a joke. I know it's it, a highlight it, reel. Don't compare yourself. Yeah, it, like and and that I mean, like it's something I even struggled with at times, right? Because yeah, you know we all do. We we worked hard to 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 create content and build this stuff. And, and you you have all of these peers and you see all these people doing all this crazy stuff and, and it'll get in your head. You but know? that's the thing, creating content, right. you know? Right, and once, as long as you remind yourself that, you know, they, everyone is a person and mm -hmm. everyone is going through stuff and yeah. and doing stuff, it, it, it keeps you grounded. Don't yeah. do it for the gram. Right. Do it because you love it. Yeah. You know? And you know, you never work a day in life, but you get to do what you love every day. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. What did you think you were gonna be doing when you were a kid? Like was were there other aspirations? Mm. As a kid I I definitely loved computers. So I thought maybe I would get into computer programming. I also liked, you know, architecture. Um, but I also just liked gaming too. So um I didn't have a definitive, you know, of what I wanted to do and then the moment that I started messing with cars it was just game over do you mind me asking how old you were when you moved to california i was 26 26 yeah did you go through i did for myself which is why i ask about going to college or not in my early 20s i definitely had a lot of regret of maybe i'm making the wrong decision mm -hmm. and if there's a time to do it, it's got to be now because it's going to be years and i might regret this down the line did you go through that regret at all or were you very much not right for me. Yeah, I felt I felt really good about my decision because mm -hmm. um, the only the only higher learning in the automotive space was being a mechanic, mm -hmm. and I didn't. Yeah, yeah. At least that's what I felt. I like. I tried going to automotive school, and yeah. and when I grasped that and realized that, well, I guess my options are I can start my own shop, really. But at the time, I I wasn't focused on starting my own stuff. I was thinking of the job I would get, and it was working at a dealership or right. turning wrenches somewhere. Right, and and I was okay working on cars, but I don't, I, I wasn't convinced that that's what I wanted to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life either. I really enjoyed driving. I feel like once I started driving and once I started drifting, I felt really, it it, it and I mean this this like. This brings in feelings of, of, you know, my dad passing and things like that. Nothing felt right until I started drifting, mm -hmm. you know? And so driving cars, the feeling of driving cars, the freedom, the, the just everything goes away. It just did something to me that led me to this, mm -hmm. right? There, there was no other option but to chase, making more opportunities for me to be inside of a car driving. Mm -hmm. And um, because of that, it made 
me feel good about my decision not to go to college. And mm -hmm. and I'm not saying you shouldn't go to college. I think there's definitely reasons uh, to go to college. I think I definitely could have learned um, a lot more about business and things like that. Sure, same. You know, yeah. but. Um, and, there, and also, I do feel like school teaches you how to apply yourself. Right. Um, because if you, you don't always learn that necessarily in the yeah. real world either. Yeah. Self-discipline is very difficult. Yeah. So remind me, did you go to college? Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Four years? Yeah. You get a, a PhD in being handsome? Or... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I was on my way to law school. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought I was going to be doing. But this girl that I was dating in college, she, I, I was, it was like the first girl like I ever like fell in love with. Right. And, um, I was actually going to be a lawyer for her, right? Because I was like, oh yeah, well, you know, we'll have a happy life together. And then she cheated on me. Oh no. And I have, actually have to thank this this woman because um, after I found that out, I became very selfish. I was like, I don't really, I'm never gonna live my life for somebody else. I'm gonna yeah. do exactly what I want to do. I'm gonna pursue this dream of being an actor and I think the combination of you know having my heart broken and then being angry yep. mm -hmm. and then feeling like I wasted my time with this person, I was gonna now like worry about myself and pursue this dream. So it gave me tunnel vision. So you know, it. I think I think back now if I had stayed with this person, I'd probably be divorced. I've had kids that you know are being neglected, right. and I'd be very unhappy. Mm -hmm. You know and so sometimes these things happen in your life where in the moment you feel, you know, like the the world is ending and it's such a horrible situation and you're angry at the world, but it actually changes the course of your yeah. life. There are the, yeah. these these doors I, that open, right? And sometimes agree right? With you. you know? Yeah, look at your life today. Yeah, yeah, I feel like Hoonigam got lucky because right when I started working there, I suffered my worst heartbreak. And uh Oh really? Yeah, and and then like tunnel vision happened and I just, I, I worked endlessly. But yeah, I I feel that. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes you gotta like, get your heart broken to, I think. To rebuild. Yeah. To have and, clarity, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Yeah. It's it's crazy. But So, so here, there's a, there's a question I wanna ask you, Hurt. I don't, we didn't really talk about it you know, when we were doing the Hot Wheels episode because that, that was the first time I met you in, yep. in, in the UK and you know, what really impressed me about that show is like the diversity in the hosts. You know, you have Rutledge and you, I can't recall her name. Dalal. Dalal, and then you, yeah. right? And so, I mean, diversity within that show, and I, I think in Hollywood, you know, there there is this like charge to, you know, have like, you know, representation. Yeah. But when you're coming up in like the car community and even currently, when I look at the landscape, there are very few African Americans, you know, that are actually part of the car community. Like right. you go to a car meet, I, you know, if I see a handful, it's it's a lucky day. You know, yeah. like, I, I want to ask you, like, why do you think that is? Um, I mean, it, it's it's a tough game. Um, I think representation is a is a massive thing, and that's one thing I'm learning uh, uh, now that I'm in the position that I am. Right, is uh, I I get a lot of uh, people who look like me come up to me and say say thank you to me for doing what I've done, so that they could see it happen and potentially go in that direction. Mm -hmm. And that that's it's it's really interesting to me because you know 20 years ago. When I was doing this, I mean, I'm from Florida. That should tell you what the automotive community might have looked like, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that part. And it's you know, it's it's a thing. I didn't I didn't let that deter me or stop me, but I understand how it could, mm -hmm. you know. And so, why? I, I I don't know why, but I think if if I had to put anything on it, I'd say having more representation might might help. Um, and I, I think it's gotten a lot better. Um, I think I think I think it's gotten much better. And that's kind of where I'm moving now. Um, 
with what I'm doing is because I mean I don't know if I told you guys, but I, I moved on from Hoonigan, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. now um, I'm partners with T Pain, uh, Nappy Boy Automotive. Um, it's black owned, you know, black Ford facing, but all inclusive. We're definitely going to focus heavy on on going to events and uh, you know just just building on that representation thing that we just spoke about. I think will, would more representation help? Sure. Um, but there's just so much groundwork that goes into it. And it's funny, I was actually thinking about this the other day because cause I, I, I fully let go of my pro dreams a long time ago um, just because of cost and everything like that. But I also didn't expect the uh, me to be where I am today, so to speak, you know, and, and that's not me putting myself on a pedestal, but no, I mean, but, I will, you're yeah. a hero to so many people. <laughs> um, you know, I have reach, I, I helped, you know, I, I worked at Hoonigan for 10 years and that brand was a powerhouse in the automotive space. And, and, you know, I have sponsors now and I, I, I do things and I'm going to try to build a real car next year. And I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, why, why don't I just try it for fun? You mm-hmm. know, see what I can make happen, see who'd be willing to help support um, the dream. I, I, honestly, I, I watch Formula D. I know so many of the drivers and the amount of work I'm going to have to do to even <laughs> even l- make eye contact with them is going to be insane. But it would be such a fun challenge to do. So uh, it's it's kind of creeping back up on my list. Yeah, of, I think it's of, necessary, Her, yeah, you know? It, it, it would be very fun. Yeah. It would be very fun. You guys got any stories you want to tell me? <laughs> What do you want to know? How'd you get in the cars? I don't think I'm really into cars. I think it's something that, um, you know, I, it's it's not like something that like I obsess over like you guys. You know, it's I'd say like, you're into cars. He just called us nerds. I wow. think no, so. No, 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 no. It's not I'm that. It's, like, it, it's it's not it's. It's it's not it's not part of my daily life. You so know? did I, cars happen for you through the movie? Fast and Furious. No, no. I had a neighbor when I when I was a kid. Like you know, my household was not like the healthiest. Um, so I'd like wander around the neighborhood, right? And um, there was this old man that was working on his sixty three or sixty nine Impala. So like a SS convertible with red interior. And he was a old Korean War vet, and he had he would always have the radio on, like and. Every time I hear Beach Boy songs, I, I think of him, yeah. and he looked like the Fonz, and Fonz is from the Happy Days, yep, you know, I he know. had his hair slicked back, and he had his like camel unfiltered cigarettes like rolled up in his sleeve, and and he would be restoring this old Impala, right? And he would let me hang out with him, and he'd never ask any questions, he's like old school dude, you know, it's like people's business or their business, you know, but he just let me sit there in the garage while he's smoking and slowly restoring this car and ask him all these stupid questions like you know what does ss mean it's like why you know does it have to be red interior like what is like oem like why does it have to like come from factory and he started showing me all these like catalogs from you know from the manufacturers to buy the badging and you know the interior parts and bits and and then I remember he was he would he was so happy the day that the convertible um, was installed, like the convertible, like you know, like the cloth or the fabric was installed. And he yeah. goes, "This is how it came out of factory, right?" And so, since I was a kid, you know, the idea of being like a caretaker for old cars was something that was planted by this gentleman, and that's why. You know, I'm not into racing and going fast. Like I actually am not even into like showing my cars to people. It's really like the idea of being a historian, being a caretaker yeah. of these old cars and having this, you know, sanctuary in a garage, you know, especially I'm always in search of like mentors too. So because I would say I know nothing, you know, as I get older, I realize I know less and less. And especially with cars, there's always something to learn. There's always somebody that knows way more than you, right? right? If you go into a you know L24 like you know Datsun Motor, there you might think you know, but then there are people that really know, mm-hmm. right? And if somebody is so 
passionate about something, usually there are lessons you're going to learn from that person that you can apply to your life, yeah. right? And that's actually my connection to cars is that I get the opportunity to meet some amazing human beings that are passionate about these like, you know, machines and these cars and they're historians or they're builders or they're racers. And most of the time I walk away, I, and you know, people would be very surprised is I don't give a shit about the car. <laughs> I do not. It's really, I care about the person. Yeah. And then I have a connection to the car. Hearing the story about the guy who used to let you hang on his garage actually helps me understand your builds and mm. things like that because you can see that kind of shine through those things. Mm. Um, that's really interesting. So, so you've never drifted a car or anything like that. I mean, because of you know the, the Fast and Furious movies, you, and I, you know they would go and train us. And um, do you like drifting? I don't even like going fast. There's a wrong answer here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the drifting, it's like, it actually puts me to sleep. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, you know, they, you know, I go to for ride-alongs and people are like all like, you know, excited and stuff. It actually starts to put me to sleep. It's really relaxing. I'm not offended. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not offended. Um, <laughs> and so it doesn't- This it doesn't, isn't a real fun podcast, guys. <laughs> it doesn't scare me, you know? It shouldn't scare you, yeah. but, uh, but, but uh, that's but interesting. But I do, but the, with the drifting as, you know, because of the access I am allowed, you know, due to the Fast and Furious movies, you know, I get to meet these like amazing people within the drift community, right? So the drifting itself, th th I have no interest in, mm -hmm. but- The car stories. Yeah, unintended. and why they're yeah. drifters and what it takes to be a drifter. Like I, I meet these professional drifters that tow their own cars from, you know, middle America yeah. and, they're, you know, there's six in a room, so their crew is like, you know, all sleeping on the floor together. And, you know, I, I get I get excited and I get inspired by that enthusiasm, that passion. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. and I, you know, I, I I say this almost on a daily basis, but to keep, you know, your headlights shining bright, your the light behind your eyes, it's very hard as yeah. you get older because life you know, fucks you up, 100%. you know what I mean? So, 100%. Well, and yeah. to what you're saying, when we went to the NASCAR race together, you were very passionate about standing by the pit boxes and watching them do tire changes and watching them work on the cars and seeing how quickly they were able to do it and how in unison they did it without communicating with their words, but more their hands. Yeah. Um, but I think that also stems from maybe your entry point, um, your entry point into automotive with this neighbor was based on the stories and seeing what he was able to create with his story, right? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Like telling that story really opened me up to to what you're into as a as a car person. But mm. I'm also curious what uh what drift events have you been to? Just for me a D. We're D. gonna we're gonna drag you out to some now. <laughs> yeah, F, F, FD. So yeah. so because you know. You know, I, I, I go to uh, an event annually called Final Bout. Yeah, so next year, let's 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 make that. I happen. think that'll probably be more my thing. Always, I've I've time. always wanted to go to a Final Bout. Yeah. I when like Instagram was like first popping off, I used to follow uh, Animal Style. Is that mm -hmm. their name? I used yeah. to. I, I don't know these people in real life. Yeah. I <laughs> I just I just like I still don't know who they are today. Yeah. But that was. Um, their stuff was really sick. Yeah, so it's team okay. based. So it's no, there's no individual individual scores. And oh, so you got to find your squad. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I. So the first year, first two years, I drove with Animal Style. Okay. At Final Bout, and I mean, I I held them back, but I'm I'm a lot better now. So if we want to run it back, well, you know, we can do that. But, um, yeah. So you know, your car show score gets taken, and and then the driving happens, which is basically a jam session for for an hour, maybe two hours, depending on um, how it's going. With the team? With the teams. Okay. Yeah, so it's all the teams. style and like a tandem of three? So or? minimum three. Uh-huh. And there's teams with up to like seven cars um, that all this have That sounds to, so cool. It, it's Did really they... cool. It's it's really cool. And, 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 you know, there are teams where I've been this person on the team where there's one guy kind of holding it back, right? And but, holding it back, it's kind of like tailing off from the right, pack. Just not doing as well. Because you want to be door to door. As close as you can be, as smooth as you can be. And sometimes there's a guy or two that kind of hold the team back, but you can't park that guy, 
You guys are a team. Mm. It's it's not about winning. Mm. It's about bringing your team together and doing the best that you can. Hmm. And so, because you are, like, if 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 you park that guy and we find out you park that guy, you're going to lose points because mm. that's just not that's not what you're here for, you know. Who is who is the, the one of the f- founders of? Final bout that lives out in LA that has the FD. Ilya. Ilya. Yeah. Yeah. Ilya keeps pressing me to go to final bout. I was yeah. supposed to go to this event. Yeah, I think right? you'd enjoy it, man. I mean, yeah. like, obviously, I, I totally understand where you're coming from and your feeling in cars. I actually love that you can say that proudly, you know, because some people would probably, you know, kind of keep that inside and not want to share that to, to Why? judge. Just, you know, uh, people like to fit in. But, I, I love I've that. never fit in. Yeah. <laughs> I still don't fit in. So there's like, you know. I question if I do yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I, I do so. not fit in anywhere yeah. still. Yeah. So that it's okay not to fit in. I don't in. fit in. I don't fit in cars. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, you're, you're right. I think people assume because, you know, of Han, like yeah. I am this like car expert sure. and mechanic and professional like level like drifter. Well, I think people see Han when they talk to you. So they don't understand that that's a character you're playing mm-hmm. yeah and then and, and I, I used to get like bashed because i would go that's why it's very hard for me to go to like cars and coffee you know i have to like drum up a lot of courage to go there because i would go and being inquisitive and just being very naive i would go to like dudes and go hey can you tell me about this car right and you know like i remember like the first time like the R8 came out, I was so infatuated with this car and there were these dudes that modified it and I went over there and I was like, can you tell me about this and like what motor is in here and like, what are you guys doing? Like, how do you modify it? Like, how do you get the horsepower? And I thought like I was making friends, yeah. right? And this, and maybe if I wasn't Han, it, you know, they would have, you know, been more accepting. But this is where I also realized, oh, you have to be careful in the car community. It's very yep. cliquish too. Yep. And you have to have a thick skin because like after I left, they were talking like hella shit about me. It actually like made me go, maybe I do not belong here, mm-hmm. right? And then as time went on, the circle of friends that I have, right? You know, they're so supportive in the car community. They're just, you know, amazing people. And you start to realize just because they're car dudes, it doesn't make us family, right? Right? Like some people are into cars for different reasons. And that's why and, they're drifting and, too. It's why? It, it feels like family a lot of, like I've, I've built a lot of family through drifting, mm, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, that, that's a tough, that's a tough situation you know being vulnerable and just being open like oh what's this and and then getting that kind of backlash but i'm glad it didn't stop you from continuing to have fun and no 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 it motivated to me to yeah. like change kind of you know the, the environment too and yeah. to be like an ambassador for this change of inclusiveness to go hey man you know it's okay that you don't know anything right right i mean come yeah. and enjoy and let us like share the knowledge just like that you know that that gentleman did in his garage right. right like i remember you know like if i think about it and you go what does ss stand for this is such a stupid question now but as a kid how are you supposed to know yeah. and somebody being willing to be your mentor and teach you that's how you get like future hurts in right. this world right so you know i i i believe like you know in you know that it is our responsibility to you know be mentors and yeah. you know to be able to pass off this knowledge and you know it, it is frustrating at times where people hoard their knowledge right yep. gatekeepers know? yeah mm-hmm. I think it's very important for someone with your reach to be in the automotive community because like a lot of people fear that that the automotive space will eventually die out but as long as we have uh, people like you with your reach and your stardom sharing the love for it somebody's going to see it and it just kind of keeps trickling up and yeah. and that's that's another thing that I love about you know working with T-Pain um cuz he's he's he has cars he's had you know fancy cars and fun cars but he's not a super car guy either you mm-hmm. know and he's learning now as as we go through this process I think he's learned a lot but um him not being afraid to be vulnerable, um, I think is great because like we went to we've 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 done three really big track days this year, mm-hmm. and he's still in very much in a learning phase of drifting, and he still comes 
and he still that's does good, his but best. he has good company and someone to teach him the ropes and that's where he can be intimidating if you know yeah it, yeah i mean it, it definitely definitely helps but it, it's something i tell him like after the event i don't tell him at the events mm-hmm. after events i'm like you know you could have just wrecked your car in front of all of these people <laughs> and they would be so excited that you wrecked your car because then they get to go online and yeah. talk shit you yeah know? yeah and and but he did it he did great he handled the pressure well he made the adjustments he he took his time and learned and i don't know i just love that you know thanks for sharing that it's like you know him willing to be vulnerable mm-hmm. right and take having that courage to fail yep i mean that's it's a big deal yeah it's a really yeah. big deal and and he he wears it on his sleeve too like we'll we'll be there uh, the day before i'm like you ready he's like no i'm not ready i don't mm-hmm. <laughs> like you know uh, he's very honest very humble I, honestly you know we we kind of breezed over it, but like i said i'm i'm joining t Payne and his co-owner and president of nappy boy automotive and and the, like that all came to light from him he said this and I, this might be oversharing but he's like i don't need money you know because he he's done well for himself he's like so i'm not asking you to join me in this so that you can make me money mm-hmm. right he's like i'm he didn't want me to think that he was using me as a entry point into the automotive space mm-hmm. since I had just been, you know, you know, been a part of Hoonigan for so long and this and that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know how much my weight my name carries, but um, a lot more than I think he does. <laughs> um, but he made it very clear. He's like, this isn't a this isn't a money thing. This is something that I'm passionate about, and this is something I can see you're clearly passionate about, and so that just makes me want us to go on this journey together and do this together. It's in the brief time that I met him when I was in Atlanta um, before going to Hungary. Um, I see a sincereness from him, yeah. and even just you saying this, I'm like, I I could I believe that just from the the little time that I. That I got to yeah. literally say hi to him. Yeah, it's he, sincere, and he just likes cars and wants to get into. It's out of this world, you know. And I, same goes with you and the people that I met on the Hot Wheels set. Like you just don't expect people who do who've done these amazing things to just be normal humans. Yeah, you right. know. You know, going back to what you said about you know the Hot Wheels show and you know meeting these people that you see on screen. Yeah, you know, like, I, I was taught you know when I was younger that the camera doesn't lie. I think it was actually Sylvester Stallone told me that because I asked him a question. I said, how does one become like a superhero? How does one become like Rocky Balboa? And he simply said, because the camera does not lie. There's certain people that can never play that role because that's not who they are, right? Mm-hmm. right? And I think T-Pain recognized, like with what Emilia was saying about himself being a sincere person because he has feet on the ground and being truthful. And then like when I see your content, I see no pretense. Literally, I, I see no like you know fakery. Like you are yeah. who you are, and and then when I meet you, you are who I thought you were going to be. Right. And there's a lot of people that have this pretense. That it's all show, mm-hmm. and I think especially with the pressures of social media, people feel like they need to embody this idea. But then I think. At least, you know, to me, at least for me, I'm so afraid of social media these yeah. days because I don't know what to believe and I don't want to put like a false representation of who I am too, yeah. right? So it's great. You know, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that, you know, because I didn't understand what this partnership with T-Pain mm-hmm. is, but actually I get it and it's exciting and it's super cool to hear that, you know, it's about like this positive, sincere representation. And I think that's gonna do, it's gonna make a tremendous difference in the car community for other African-American kids that wonder, you know, like how do I be, you know, be a part of this community, right? right? And, you know, when I met you, I was like, what a great ambassador, you know? And, you know, Hurt, I hope you don't change because they say, you know, Fame changes people, don't, but don't or money changes people. I'm, just, I'm, the, <laughs> I'm the same guy. But no, I think I, your mama raised you right. You I know, appreciate so, your words, man. Yeah. It, it means a lot to me. It, it this is uh, everything I've done has just come out of love. Like every uh, being organic and being true, and and just just giving your true self uh, has always been how I've thrived. So I mean, that's not going to change. Um, you know, if you guys see me drifting a Lamborghini in the near future, 
I might be a little different, but not tremendously different. But um, there's nothing wrong with that. Still support it because you know you're gonna do something so sick with that car. (laughs) It's been amazing talking to you. Yeah, sincerely, thanks for coming on. You're awesome, and I'm so happy we got to chat with you. I was really happy when you guys uh, hit me up to invite me on. It, 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 you know, I don't know. Just feels special to be a part of. 